Welcome to FVWL RIC Supported Study Resources for Classical Studies Classical Society Component for National 5. My name is Mrs Walker. In this presentation, we are going to be consolidating and supporting study skills for National 5 through tuition and the use of exemplar answers. You'll also be provided with example questions to be attempted during the lesson. Using this resource will allow you to apply your understanding of various skills in National 5 Classical Studies. You'll be able to evidence this by completing the example questions which are contained within this PowerPoint. At the bottom right of each slide, you will see various symbols which will indicate what you should be doing on that slide. The symbols we will be using below are read, pause video to complete task, write or copy or correct your work. Your National 5 paper totals 80 marks and is divided into three sections. In today's PowerPoint, we are looking at sections one and section three, namely section one, Life in Classical Greece, which is worth a maximum of 30 marks, and Life in the Roman World, also worth 30 marks. Your school will either be looking at the Roman world in Pompeii or the Roman world in Roman Britain. There are six question types which you might be asked to complete as part of your National 5 Classical Studies paper in sections one and sections three. They are a described question for four marks, a to what extent question worth eight, an explain the reasons why question which is worth six, a compare which is worth four marks, explain what a source or sources is saying for four marks or an evaluate the source question also worth four marks. So let's get started looking at our different question types and associated skills. Here you will see a describe question structure. Your describe question is worth four marks. In a describe question you will be able to gain one mark for each valid point or each development of a point that you make. If there are two different aspects which you are being asked to describe in a question, it is only possible for you to gain a maximum of three marks if you do not describe one of the two aspects that are listed. Also, please remember that a described question is asking you to do more than just lift, list a number of things. Okay, so here below you can see a describe question and part of an answer example which shows development of a valid point being made. Your question, describe the equipment used by a schoolboy in classical Greece. Answer one, he would use a wax tablet, which was a wooden board spread with beeswax. You've explained what the wax tablet was and how it looked. You've developed your point. You've done more than simply list a wax tablet. He could scratch or erase letters into it using a metal stylus. Once again, you've stated that a schoolboy would use a metal stylus. You've also explained what he would use it for. He would use it to write on his wax tablet. This answer is a valid point with development. This would gain you two marks. Here is the same question and a partial response to it, but this time without any development. Notice the difference. Answer two, a classical Greek schoolboy would use a wax tablet, a stylus, a reed pen and an abacus. Now, this would gain the candidate one mark. What they've done here is listed 
various articles used by a Greek schoolboy, but they haven't described or developed their list. They would gain one mark for knowledge shown. Here you will see a describe question and answer example where two different aspects are covered in the question. Your question, describe a snack bar or thermopolium and the services it provided. So you are being asked to describe a snack bar and services it provided. Here is a response which shows you how you would gain marks for a question like this. A snack bar was usually only a room opening onto the street. One mark for knowledge. It had a stone counter which was often decorated with coloured marble. Again, this is knowledge that has been applied for a second mark. Large storage jars were set into the counter for a third mark. The candidate then writes there was a stove for cooking and heating water. They would not gain a mark for this. Although four valid points have been made here, all of these points were about the snack bar. The service aspect of the question has been ignored. So this candidate could only achieve three marks for their response. Please see below a describe question for you to try. I'd like you to attempt the question using the criteria we have covered. Remember, a describe question is worth four marks and can be made up of four valid points made or two valid points with development. Also, you might choose to make a valid point and develop it for a second mark and then make two more valid points without development. Any of these combinations are acceptable. Your question. Describe what it would have been like to attend a dinner party in Pompeii in 79 AD. When you have completed this question, there is an exemplar answer which would gain four marks on slide 12. Remember, you can refer back to slides 7 to 10 for any support if this is required. Please see the exemplar below. This will help you to mark your answer. I'd like you to pay attention to where the marks have been allocated. Once again, your question. Describe what it would have been like to attend a dinner party in Pompeii in 79 AD. This is worth four marks. The dinner parties in Pompeii took place in the main dining room of the home. This was decorated with beautiful paintings depicting mythical or everyday scenes from ancient Greek life. This would give you one mark. People attending the dinner party ate lying down on couches. The couches were arranged around a low serving table. This would gain you a second mark. Pompeians ate with their fingers at the dinner party. They did not use cutlery like we do today. One mark. When the people were finished eating, they would throw any of their leftover food onto the floor. This tells us the behaviour of the guests for a fourth mark. This point is then developed when the candidate writes, it was the duty of the slaves to come and clean up the mess. Now five marks have been achieved here. Notice the final sentence in italics. It shows how a developed point was made about the way guests discarded their food. Now we move on to our to what extent questions and how to structure these. To what extent questions are worth eight marks. Now to score highly in these questions, I always encourage my students to structure their answer correctly and consider this question type almost as a mini essay. To achieve well into what extent questions, you must use both your own knowledge 
and present a reasoned conclusion about a given issue. Now this is how marks are allocated in a to what extent question. One mark will be given for each point of knowledge used to explain the issue, up to a total of five marks. So knowledge is worth up to over half the value of the question. You're awarded one mark for an alternative view where you explain different aspects of the issue. And then your conclusion is worth two marks. Your first mark will be given for presenting a conclusion. And then your second mark, second mark is awarded for giving a reason why you have reached that conclusion. Here is a to what extent question answer exemplar which would gain a candidate full marks. To what extent did women lead dull and restricted lives in Athens in the 5th century BC? This is how you would begin your sentences. You will see this in italics. Firstly, Women in 5th century BC Athens led dull and restricted lives as they had little control over the direction of their own lives and from birth were told what to do by their father and then by their husband. This would gain you one knowledge mark. Secondly, women were prohibited from choosing a husband. Their marriage would have been arranged by their father. Thirdly, women were restricted from participating in politics and had no political representation. Fourthly, it could also be said that women led dull lives as they were expected to remain indoors for much of the time and run the household, manage slaves and care for children. Finally, women led restrictive and dull lives as they were not allowed to gain an education or pursue a career. Now, at this point, the candidate has demonstrated five valid points of knowledge which suggest ways in which women in 5th century BC Athens could have led dull and restricted lives. Now for your alternative viewpoint, which would gain the candidate their sixth mark. However, it could be said that women did not leave dull and restrictive lives, as many would have enjoyed managing slaves, the household and caring for their children. They would have gained a lot of personal enjoyment from these relationships and would not have felt restricted, as it was the normality for women of the time. So the candidate recognises that women would not potentially have known any different if that was the life that they were living. They would have found potential enjoyment in this restricted aspect of their life. Your conclusion. In conclusion, in many ways, women did leave restricted and dull lives. Now that is your first mark. You've expressed a conclusion as they were treated like second class citizens and not given the same opportunities as men. Now, here the candidate has given a reason for the conclusion that they have reached. The conclusion reached has taken into account the five knowledge points. Here is a to what extent question for you to attempt yourself. Please attempt the question using the criteria and structure which we have covered in slides 13 and 14. To what extent were slaves essential to the daily life of the household in classical Athens for eight marks? See slide 16 for an exemplar answer. Here is a response which would achieve full marks. You can use this to check your own answer. To what extent were slaves essential to the daily life of the household in classical Athens? Firstly, slaves had an essential part to play in the daily life of the household in Athens, making sure that the wealthy citizens of Athens lived a good life. Secondly, female slaves helped the women of the household to cook and clean for the household and took instruction from her for a second mark. Thirdly, owning slaves freed up time for male citizens to further their studies in education, 
which allowed developments to be made in science, philosophy and drama for a third knowledge mark. Fourthly, both male and female slaves would have helped with all the outside work, managing crops, tending to animals, fetching and carrying to help the Kyrios to make a good living. Fourth knowledge mark. Finally, female slaves provided all forms of entertainment at dinner parties as singers, dancers and prostitutes. These roles would not be expected of the wife or daughters of the Kyrios. For a fifth knowledge mark. However, although slaves had an important role in the daily life of a household in Athens, it was in fact the wife of the Kyrios who had more essential duties within the household as she scheduled and organised work. So this is your alternative viewpoint stating that the wife of the head of the household actually was more essential as she organised everything occurring within that household. In conclusion, slaves had an essential part in the daily life of the household in classical, classical Athens. One mark, helping the woman take care of certain duties in the household and helping the Kyrios to earn a good living. So once again, this is a reason for the conclusion reached. Here is your explain the reasons why skill, which can gain you a maximum of six marks. Now in an explain the reasons why, you will be able to achieve one mark for each valid reason or a second mark for a development of a, rad of a valid reason. Now, if a question is asking you why something was important or popular, etc., the reasons that you write about should relate to that particular angle. It is really important to always read what the question is asking you. So within your explain the reasons why question structure, here is how to gain two marks of the six. This candidate has made one valid point showing knowledge and then developed this point. Explain the reasons why there were so many slaves in classical Athens. Many slaves were employed to do work that free citizens did not want to do themselves. For example, thousands of slaves worked in the hot, dark and dangerous conditions of the silver mines. Now this candidate has shown knowledge about why slaves were employed, they have then given an example of this point, thus developing it for a total of two marks. Here we see a partial explain the reasons why exemplar, which would gain three marks. Explain the reasons why working in a laundry or fullery in Pompeii was an unpleasant job. This is a total of six marks to be gained. Working in a laundry was unpleasant because you had to trample the cloth in human urine, which would be smelly. It was also smelly when sulphur was burned to bleach cloth. It was unpleasant having to lift wet cloth out of the tanks because you would be soaked. Now, all of these reasons are valid and applied knowledge, which focus on unpleasantness. So this partial answer would gain three marks. Here is an explain the reasons why question for you to try. Remember to check out slides 17 to 19 if you require any advice or support once more on the structure of this type of question. Explain the reasons why religion was important to the people of Pompeii for six marks. You will find an exemplar answer to this question on the next slide. Here you'll see a response which achieves full marks. Notice that this answer is made up of two valid points and two more valid points, each with development. There were many temples in Pompeii, which meant that they were frequented by the citizens. In part, this was because the public temples were built and maintained with public money and therefore utilized as a public resource. The fact that the temples were expensive and time consuming to build shows that religion was important to the Pompeians. 
Public holidays were granted for religious festivals and sacrifices, which would have been another reason for their importance to citizens. Families in Pompeii believed that by keeping the household gods happy, they could help protect their family and the contents of their homes. It is for this reason that daily worship through prayer and small dedications was led by the head of the household. Now we move on to compare questions, which are worth a maximum of four marks. Now this question type requires you to use your own knowledge to identify both similarities and differences between classical society and the modern world. You will gain one mark for each valid comparison or development of a comparison. It's essential that you include both similarities and differences in your answer. You will only be able to gain a maximum of three marks if you only use similarities or you only use differences. So you must include separate comparisons or a mixture of comparisons and develop points. Now, 1900 onwards is classed as the modern world. So you can use anything from 1900s to today. You can also select any area or culture to use for your comparison. See below effective use of the compare question structure. Please notice within the answer anything that is typed in italics. This provides a good start to a compare question and also links the comparisons between classical Athens and the modern world. Compare a trial in a court in classical Athens with a trial in a court in the modern world. You should identify similarities and differences between trials in classical Athens and trials in the modern world. There are many similarities and differences between trials in Athens and trials in the modern world. In Scotland today, there are 15 people on a jury. This is different to Athens, where there could be hundreds of jurymen. Big juries made it hard to bribe the jurors. Today, women can be judges or on a jury. This is different to Athens, where only men were allowed. You could torture slaves to get evidence in classical Athens. You can't do that today. Juries in Scotland hear the evidence presented to them. This is similar to what happened in Athens as the jurors had to listen to the cases being presented and then make a decision. Now you will see that this candidate has used three areas of difference and one area of similarity between classical Athens and the modern day to achieve four marks. Here is a compare question for you to try. If you require to recap anything, please view slides 22 and 23 again, which go over criteria and structure that is required. Compare education in schools and in classical Athens with education in schools in the modern world. You should identify similarities and differences between education in classical Athens and education in the modern world for four marks. Here is a compare question which you can check your answer against. Now notice that two of the points have been developed. You will see this development in bold type. There are similarities and differences between education in ancient Athens and education in the modern world. Today, both boys and girls must attend school from the age of five to 16. This is different to ancient Athens where only boys went to school. Point for development. Girls were educated by their mothers in basic reading and maths, but their main education was learning how to manage a home, slaves and how to be a good mother. In the modern world, corporal punishment is no longer allowed in schools. This is different to classical Athens, where the teacher could hit a boy who did something wrong to make him learn the correct way. Today, school teachers can be male or female, 
as both genders can gain an education. This is different to life in ancient Athens. All school teachers were male as girls were not allowed to gain a full education or have a job. Today, pupils learn a variety of subjects in school which prepare them for their adult life and the job they choose. This is similar to ancient Athens where boys learn subjects including writing and reading to help them run their own business and homes as adults. This point is developed by saying they also learned PE to help them defend their family as Kyrios as well as preparing them for military service aged 18. Now this extra example here it's never a bad thing to provide an extra example if you're able to include one. This has enabled the candidate to achieve a second mark for development. Okay, now we're moving on to your explain what a source tells us question, which is worth a maximum of four marks. You're going to be able to gain a mark each time you provide a valid explanation of a point which is noted in the source. However, if you just refer to or quote directly from the source without explaining it, this will mean you achieve no marks. The first part of your explain what the source tells us question requires you to obviously read the source. Your question is explain what the source tells us about education in classical Athens. Now, to help you here, I have highlighted four areas I've selected, which I will be discussing, and I've highlighted these in different colours. Teacher, beat this son of mine. He hardly comes to school, yet I must pay the bill on the 30th of each month. He hides his writing tablet between the bedpost and the wall. He won't write a proper word and doesn't know the letter A unless you shout it at him five times. I told him to write Maron and he wrote Simon. I wish I'd sent him to learn how to herd animals on the farm instead of sending him to learn his letters. Now using the highlighted areas, I'm now going to show you how to use this information to construct your answer. In the explain what the source tells us response below, I have used the same colour coding as I did for the source to show you the way in which I have used highlighted information from the source to form my answer. Explain what the source tells us about education in classical Athens. The source tells us that corporal punishment was frequently used in schools to correct bad or inappropriate behaviour. We can also see from the source that education in classical Athens was not free. It had to be paid for by the boy's father. We are told in the source that work was completed on a writing tablet, which was spread with wax and written on using a stylus. Finally, we see the father wished he'd sent his son to, and then I quote, learn how to herd animals on the farm. This tells us that school was not compulsory in classical Athens. Many boys went to work instead of going to school. Here is an explain what the source tells us question for you to try. If you require to recap anything, you can refer to slides 26 to 28 of this PowerPoint. Source A was written by Xenophon in the 4th century BC. Read the source and explain what it tells us about the lives of women in classical Athens. You should explain what points about women's lives are being made in the source and explain what they mean for four marks. Here is a four mark response to this question. Once again, the areas I have written about correspond with highlighted areas from the source. The source begins by telling us that the woman was received by the man from her father, indicating that women were not allowed to choose their own husband. This was arranged by their father. We then read that the woman was not yet 15, which tells us that women in ancient Greece were married at a younger age than today. The minimum age for a girl to be married was 12. We read that the woman has lived 
quote, a very sheltered life, seeing and hearing very little and asking very few questions, which tells us that women spent a considerable amount of their life in the home and would have little to no contact with the outside world. It also indicates that women would not ask questions or challenge what their husband, father or other male relatives said. The source tells us that the woman is told that the home and, quote, the dowry she brought with her from her father are her property as well as her husband's. This tells us that this woman is treated well by her husband. However, some women weren't so fortunate. When a woman married, she was given by the father to her new husband along with a dowry. This suggests that women were often viewed as possessions and as inferior to men. Finally, we come to our evaluate the use usefulness of a source question, which is worth four marks. For an evaluate the usefulness of a source question, you must make a judgment about the usefulness of the source by making evaluative comments on who produced the source, when it was produced, why it was produced, the content of the source, taking into account issues of accuracy, bias, exaggeration and corroboration. And then by making one reference to an area of specific content which the source has omitted, thereby limiting its usefulness. Please see below the question structure for and evaluate the usefulness of a source. Remember, you will gain one mark for each evaluative comment on the value of the source. See below and evaluate the usefulness of a source question for you to attempt. Please go back and review any information on how to do this using slides 31 and 32 of our lesson. The source is from 5th century BC Greek historian Xenophon and your question is asking you to evaluate the usefulness of source A in describing the role of an Athenian wife. You should comment on who wrote it, when they wrote it, what they say, why they say it or what it has missed out for four marks. Here is a full response to and evaluate the usefulness of the source question. You can check your answer against this exemplar. Source A is useful for describing the role of an Athenian woman as it was written in the 5th century BC when women were expected to stay at home for a large percentage of the time and maintain the house. The source was written by a Greek historian Xenophon who likely witnessed within Athenian society and possibly his own household the role and expectations of an Athenian wife. The source specifically mentions that, quote, you will certainly have to be concerned about nursing any of the slaves who become ill. This shows that women had many more responsibilities in the household other than cleaning and cooking, including caring for ill family members and slaves. The source also mentions, quote, when wool is brought into you, you must see that clothes are produced for those who need them. This shows that the expectations of an Athenian wife was to make clothes for people other than for her own family, including slaves. However, the source fails to mention that the wife also had to take care of the children and educate them in addition to looking after them when they were ill, which limits its usefulness. Congratulations for completing skills lesson for National 5 Classical Studies sections 1 and 3. Please use these slides as required to assist you with any study you're undertaking. Remember to access SQA resources, workbooks and of course your own teacher for further study advice and support.